Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Joni Young if you're new here and I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this windmill with blue flowers in silhouette. So if you'd like to learn how to do this step by step then stay tuned. Okay, so if you guys are ready to get started, you're going to need a 12 by 12 primed canvas. I primed it once with acrylic white gesso and I let it dry before beginning. Here are the colors that we're going to be using today and I'll add a few more as we go along and be sure to post them below in the description in a full list for you. We've got light blue, neon orange, neon yellow, and a number 12 filbert brush. I'm going to begin by taking blue with a little bit of water on my brush and I'm going to add where I want my patches of blue sky to be showing. So it's going to be a little bit muted. Later on we'll be adding a little bit of orange and blending it into the blue. And then later on we'll even be adding just a little bit of black just to make it look a little bit uh, darker um, to go along with our uh, sunset painting today and our silhouette. Okay, so I'm just going to soften this a little bit by taking some titanium white, no water, and just a little bit of my light blue. Now you can use any blue that you want for your sky in this painting. I'm using a sky blue, and I'm just going to go in between and around some of these areas that I have the blue on, just so I get a little bit of a softer tone and um, just overall soften some of these edges. Now once this is dry and I come in with my yellow and my orange, we're going to get different tones, multi-tones happening because of this. Time for our next step, I'm going to take, without washing my brush, a bit of blue and a bit of neon orange, mix the two together on my palette, then I'm going to come in across the top and start adding this lightly overlapping on part of the blue. I'm going to come down below here and start adding smaller amounts, creating that perspective, making it look like those clouds on the horizon are far away. Just a little bit more up top. I'll come in with a little bit of white after this to create some more of those lighter, softer tones after washing my brush off. And then just soften these edges up a little bit. Make sure that I get a nice blending happening here. We want our sky to look really soft, but striking at the same time. And now the striking part will come from the neon yellow and orange and bit of red that we add a little bit later on. Now once I finish adding my thin layers of white here, I'm going to blow dry this off. I want to make sure it's completely dry before coming in uh, with my other colors. Okay, so let's start drying this off. It should take just a couple minutes. We know acrylic paint dries awfully fast, doesn't it? With a clean brush, same filbert brush, I've got my neon yellow first, and I'm gonna just start applying it around where my sun, my glowing bright, bright sun is gonna be down here. 
I want to make sure I leave a little space in there, a little circle for um, the white I'll add later on for the brightest part of the sun. Without washing my brush, I'm going to pull in a little bit of my neon orange now from either side and then scoop down below, pulling and blending, not to cover up all of the neon yellow, but just to enhance and overlap parts of it. So we still want to have uh, little bits of that neon yellow showing. And I'm going to bring it down lower, down towards the bottom. And I'm going to make it darker and darker as we get down to the bottom of the canvas, of course. But before we do that, I'm going to come up here just a little bit. And you can definitely overlap part of your blue uh, mixture that we have in the sky. That's going to make some nice uh, tones. Everything will just come together really nicely. It's really fun to filter over with other colors. Uh, and see how different all those colors look after you apply another color over top. Uh, I've been doing this a lot lately in my paintings and um, from what you guys are telling me you're learning a lot so that's great. I'm happy to hear that. I'm glad you guys are learning something new and getting inspired with some new techniques. So I'm just going to continue to add more of my orange little bit of yellow, white, and get this area nice and bright. A little bit more yellow and white here. You'll notice that if you overlap yellow with the blue, of course it'll turn green. So I'd like to tint my yellow and white with just a little bit of the orange. But if you do get some green going in there, that'll look pretty as well. Uh, the green is complementary to the bit of red that we'll be adding later on, so it'll all look nice together. It just depends on how much color that you want to have in your painting. So I'm going to create my little sun here, little circle, and go over it with straight titanium white. To start working on some more shadows darker colors down here again mixing up that orange and blue and i'm going to just softly ease into this gradually one shadow at a time and one layer at a time now i've got black and i'm just using a craft looser watered down paint it's fine for this you only need a little bit and i'm taking a little bit of neon orange with that and i'm going to start pulling along the bottom where we're going to have uh, all our foliage and mostly in silhouette down below but later on you'll see I add a little bit of that blue which just really really looks quite pretty I think and it was a nice addition to this um, and this is a little tiny mop brush that I'm using now I didn't get it wet first I'm going directly right into my orange with just a little bit of black first and I'm going to start pulling and sweeping and then tapping in for some foliage and it's completely up to you guys how much you want to add now with my uh, large filter brush, I'm going to pull and blend around so I'll be kind of hopping back and forth between mop brushes and this brush just for blending out and softening after and maybe taking off some of the paint if you accidentally add a bit too much. Um, and I knew that I wanted to add more orange and have more color down below so um, I knew I needed to take off just a little bit of that uh, dark black shadow color. So I'll blend this out creating different tones here and then I'm going to completely dry this off and come in with my next layer. Right, so I've got a clean brush, a dry canvas and I'm going to come over top of those colors with my neon red now. I love this pop of color. It's so satisfying to use these neon paints. Now if you don't have any neon paints, just use any bright red that you want. It'll still look really nice. Uh, if you're curious about the paints I'm using today, my neon paints are Holbein Luminous Neon Acrylic Heavy Bodied. You can find them on Amazon and certain fine art stores. I'm now going to take a little bit of yellow after washing that red out of my brush. I'm just going to work up the saturation in this painting now, adding more color to make it really, really pop. 
And as I'm doing this, I just want to mention that this is a request I'm fulfilling for one of my patrons. I'm having so much fun getting out of my comfort zone with all these requests you guys are throwing at me. So it's uh, things that I would never think to paint. And um, I discover as I'm fulfilling these requests for you guys how much I'm actually enjoying painting different things. So keep them coming, guys. Remember, if you want to be a patron, there's a link below for that. There's lots of perks and benefits to becoming a patron, including a chance to win an original painting of mine every month. So I'm going to come in now with my mop brush again and come over top with a little bit of red, orange, and black. Just kind of tinting my black, toning my black to come in with this next layer here that's going to be a little bit softer before we come in with our black which will be the most intense part and the darkest part of this painting. So finishing up with this little mop brush, I'm going to switch over to a larger size now and soften some areas, tapping larger bushes and foliage. And this will just kind of change up the sizes of bushes and what we have going on here in the foreground. important to make sure you have little spaces in between. Don't make anything look too solid on the top. You can make it solid on the bottom, but just not on the very top. Now I'm just coming in with a little bit of that blue, just pushing and tapping without washing my brush off. I don't need to because I've got a thick amount of paint here and I'm not going to apply a lot, a lot of pressure. And I am painting wet on wet. It works both ways. You can do this if your paint is dry underneath or if it's wet. So you don't want to tap too much in one spot, otherwise you'll lose the blue, It'll the black will overtake it, it'll kind of just get lost into that black. So I think that less is more down here with the blue, but I will come in later with just a few little suggestions of daisies or whatever flowers uh, you want them to be. You can make any flowers that you like. Okay, with a flat brush now, I've got a small flat brush, and I'm just going to start freehanding my windmill. You guys can follow along one step at a time with this windmill. You can sketch it out first. I actually recommend, especially if you're a beginner and if you just really don't feel comfortable freehanding it, go ahead and sketch it out. There are tons of reference photos out there of different types of windmills, so if you want to do something a little bit simpler, you can. And I'll let you guys follow along. I'm using black with a little bit of water at times just to make some of the areas a little bit lighter in tone and softer looking. But have fun with this, guys. Don't be afraid. Just go for it and you can do this. So all I'm doing is creating little lines that get narrower and narrower. I've got about four to five, maybe six lines in there. Doesn't really matter. And it just looks like a really skinny long triangle. So you can just look at it like that um, and break it down into shapes first. So just create a long skinny triangle if you want and then come in with those lines in between. There's going to be a suggestion of a little ladder there, but you know, the windmill is far away, so you don't have to worry too much about um, getting carried like don't get too carried away with uh, detail uh, focus on the main feeling that you want to portray in your painting and just add little suggestions so just going across kind of just tapping and pulling the flat brush is really a great brush to use for this because it'll help you get straighter lines um, and if you use a filbert brush you'll be fighting that because there's a curve to the end of a filbert brush it's round of course so i really recommend using a flat brush for this a liner brush would be a little bit difficult as well they're harder to control and then i'm going to do another little triangle here on the very top and fill it in and then i'm going to work on the two uh, larger pieces of the windmill on the top left side. But before I do that, I'm going to add a line, a few lines across and just redefine my ladder a little bit more just to make it stand out from all the other lines.
so it's time to start painting the main part of our windmill the top of it of course so we're just going to do two little blobs one that looks think about it as like oval so one oval that goes across and one oval that goes straight up and down and connect them and then we're going to come out to the side and paint two more triangles that are going to be a little bit wider than the base of this windmill stand so we're going to come out just simple tell yourself you're just painting triangles it makes it a lot easier and simplifies things when you break it down into shapes and then we'll fill them in with black So now I'm going to come around and create a circle, just do this freehand of just adding a little lines. So the size of this flat brush, the width of it is perfect for creating the spaces I need in between all these little pieces for the rest of our fan. So we'll just do make up a little circle right here, or of course you guys can sketch it out first, uh, use a template or um, a reference photo to go by, whatever you guys wanna do, however you wanna approach this is completely up to you. You guys know by now that I like to approach things freehand. So I'm gonna do each one at a time, drawing the shape, it's kind of like a long skinny triangle, and then I'll add a little bit of a line on the end of each of them to make them a little bit flat. Again, just using this brush, you can use whatever brush you guys feel comfortable with using. And then of course I'm going to paint them all in black. Okay, so after filling in and tidying up all the edges best I can with the black, I'm going to come in and make this circle a little bit wider and more of a circle shape in the center, just kind of fix the shape up a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with some white paint in between and tidy up all the areas where I need to have some spaces in between.
So I'm just about done up top here. I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight and soften the bottom of the windmill up. Just pull the excess paint out of my brush very lightly, creating some more uh, balance to the light and the spaces in between here. And I'm just going to pull and sweep down with my brush very lightly, giving it just a soft bit of a highlight here and then blend it out with my finger. I'm going back into my black paint and I'm going to add the finishing touches to the top of this windmill before I begin adding the flowers down below. So there's going to be a few skinny lines in between each of these uh, little uh, fans or the triangles, whatever you want to call them. You can use a liner brush if you want. Um, I'm using a flat brush or a filbert brush here. Either one works. So just really skinny with a little bit of black paint. And then I'm going to do a line, like another circle, but really, really skinny. Just to make those join up. And then I'm going to go over with a fresh coat of black paint on the rest of the fan. And then we'll move on to the pretty blue frosty looking flowers down below. washing my brush off I've got a little bit of my blue a little bit of black in there just to um, make sure that it's not too too bright because this painting is supposed to be in silhouette but you can have other little shadows and blue is a really good choice for adding a shadow color if you don't just want to have strictly black so I'm just using the filbert brush for my petals it's a great brush to use for creating flower petals just little taps all the way around keeping it a very simple basic flower shape So if you want your petals to be a little bit thicker, you'll push just a little bit harder using more the width of your brush. And if you want smaller ones, then you're not going to tap or push as hard. You can also use a smaller brush. You can use a liner brush if you want or a round brush, but I really, really love uh, the shape of the flower petals I get with a, a filbert brush. And I also like using the filbert brush. And you guys have probably seen me in the past uh, tutorials painting um, ferns and lots of foliage and beautiful leaves like ivy leaves by using um, the filbert brush. It's a really great brush for creating foliage if you want to add more detail to your landscapes. So I'll continue adding this just a little bit more, um, keeping some of my flowers smaller and some of them and making some of them bigger. So you want to have a different uh, variety of sizes for your flowers. All right, so I'm gonna go into my beautiful neon red, and this is by Holbein. Still using my little filbert brush. I've washed all the other paint out of it, and I'm making sure that all the paint underneath is dry before adding this filter over. You notice where I'm concentrating on adding this color, so mainly below the sun in that little dip or scoop, uh, whatever you wanna call it down there. And then I'm also just very lightly grazing over part of the flowers so once that's dry it's going to be a beautiful uh, sort of a lavender or violet color and once I finish doing that I'm going to wash my brush out and go back to my large filbert brush uh, or any blending brush you want to use and just take a little bit of blue with black making a bluey a blue gray color here and dry brushing so I've got hardly any water or paint on my brush at all I'm just doing a very, very thin dry brush coat, dusting over part of these clouds to give them a little bit more of a smoky look and a little bit more mood. So this is the finishing touches to this painting. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this today. I want to wish you all a happy new year. All the best for 2021. I want to thank you all so much for all the tremendous support and love over the past year on my channel and on Patreon, Facebook, and Instagram. Have a wonderful day. Happy painting. And I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye!